Yo, Elliot, I've got four kids and my oldest son, who is 11 years old, always has his friends coming over before school and after school, and I don't like it. I like my home being my home and kingdom. I don't want kids other than mine walking in and out, especially when I have daughters here. Particularly, I'm worried about my autistic daughter. I've set boundaries with the boys, but my wife insists on being overly hospitable with them, making them food and letting them hang out and do their homework there. I snapped on one of his friends because he just walked into my house without walking, without knocking uh, to wash his hands. Am I crazy? He wasn't even hanging out at my house. He was on his way home from school. I'm not okay with that. Just walking in and shit. I feel like my wife makes it too comfortable for the kids and I'm the opposite. I've told them not to come over earlier than 7.50 in the morning before school, and they show up every morning before at 7.40. Anyways, I make them wait outside, but my wife always lets them come in, sit on the couch. I straight up kick them out when I see this. She says she understands the morning now, but not after school. I tell them not to just walk in my house, and they have listened to me since the last time. I just don't want them thinking that this is their hangout place where they can come in and eat my food, mess up my house. I'm not down with that. I'm not sure if that is wrong of me, though, and if there's a better, less conflicted way of setting these boundaries and getting my wife to understand why. She's listening, but thinks I'm crazy controlling asshole about it. What do you think, bro? I think that if I allow them to get comfortable, they will treat my home like their home, especially when I'm at work. I take his friends to do shit all the time. I just like my home being my home. So the first conflict, the first issue that needs to be dealt with is you and your wife coming together and agreeing on what's appropriate. And I think you need to be very specific about what you'll tolerate and what you won't tolerate. And uh, dare I say, there will be some compromise. There, you, you, will, you will need to compromise. I mean, that's what family is about. Family is about compromise. But you should also be very clear, not fuzzy, uh, and it needs to be clear to your wife, it needs to be clear to your, to your sons, what is expected when your friends come over and when they're not allowed to come over. Let me give you a very personal example. When I was a kid, my dad had, my dad has a, has a, has a handful of expectations for us, and then by proxy, our friends when we were kids. One of the expectations were that there was nobody in our house after dinner. Once it's dinner, your friends got to say goodbye or you got to come home and that's it. Dinner time was a, was a special time. Whatever happens before that, if your friends are here, it's not a big deal. But once dinner time comes, my dad wants to sit at the dinner table with his family and no one else. So there was a cutoff there. And that was very, very well known in my neighborhood. It was, you know, di dinner time at the Hulses, so we would all disappear inside. The kids would still be running around outside. Sometimes we would, like, look out the window and wish we were with them. But the bottom line is my dad wanted to have dinner with his family, number one. Number two, nobody was allowed at our house on Sundays. There were certain days that nobody's allowed at our house. We weren't allowed to go anywhere. That was my dad's rule, right? And he said, Sunday is a day where I just want my family, right? So he'd be at work and there would be kids running in and out of my, out of my house. He didn't see it. He didn't have to deal with it. My wife dealt with, or, or his wife dealt with it. My mother dealt with it. My dad didn't really have to deal with it. He'd come home from work. It's dinner time. All right, let's settle down and uh, abide by what, what dad requires. And so it was, really wasn't a big deal that our friends were over during the day, right? He wasn't even there and he didn't really care. He's just like, when I come home, I want there to be nobody else here, right? Um, also, my dad and my mom were big on manners, huge on manners. Three things that had to always proceed out of our mouths no matter where we went were please, thank you, and hello, hello, hello. That's the strangest one. Please and thank you. I think some people teach their children to say please and thank you. But more and more people are not teaching their children to say please and thank you. And that's a, that's a, that's a, that's a big problem. Children need to respect adults. I know that they don't. The world teaches them to uh, neglect adults and to have animosity towards adults and animosity towards authority. And there's no respect. So teaching your children to say please and thank you should be second nature in your home. 
Also, when your children go to someone else's house, my I had to, and my father expected us, when we walk into somebody's house, first of all, you don't just walk in the door. You never walk in, you might, we don't walk into anybody else's door, house, always knock, right? You, this is a boundary that you might want to set, take some notes. And you come and say hello to the parents. My parents' expectation was that if I go to my neighbor's house, when I walk in that door, if I see an adult, I say, hello, hi, Miss Jerry, uh, hi, Mr. Rob, hi, Miss so-and-so. I would, and, 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 and I guess I'm adding to this too, Mr. and Mrs. There's no calling adults by their first name. This, my dad would tolerate a lot as long as the kids that came to our house had manners. And so we had to teach our friends manners. We, I had to teach my friends when they come in my house, make sure you say hello to my mother. And I had other friends that did that too. These are usually people from foreign countries. Whenever I went to like my Puerto Rican friends or my Haitian friends' homes, people who, you know, even my Greek friends, I would go to their house and, and some of them, they made it known. They said, hey, when you walk in, when you walk in, make sure you say hello to my, my dad. Dad might be on the couch. You walk in and you say, hi, mister, mister so-and-so, and that was it. I do the same thing with my children. I expect my children to have manners wherever they go. Say please, say thank you, say hello. So the very things that I, and Mr. and Mrs. Like there's a lot of adults out there that will try to, uh, try to subvert that. Right, I, I think of some of Colleen's friends in particular. They just want to be called Barbie. Oh, just call me Barbie. No, I don't care. And I tell my children, I don't care if she tells you, call her Barbie. In our house, when we deal with adults, we say Miss Barbie. In fact, it, it, it just kind of like to show you like to the extreme that my family went with regard to this. Before my parents were married, my mom used to call my dad Mr. Edmund because he's five years older than her. That's the kind of respect that my parents were taught to have. So they, before they got married, my dad, my mom would call my dad Mister when they were dating or courting. I don't know my parents, but my mom would call my dad Mister, Mister Edmund. That's a, that, that's to the extreme that my parents respected, required respect. Now with my children, I tell them to tell their friends to say hello, and they've got some friends that are rude. They've got some friends that will come over and just like look me straight in the face and keep going. And so I've had to sit my children down on several occasions and say, listen, when your friend comes over, instruct them to say hello. Remind them to use their manners. I have one kid that used to come over, you know, we live in a different neighborhood now, and she was very nice, but she would call me Elliot. And I had to, I, in, in a very kind way, right, not a, in an aggressive and angry way, tell her, Mr. Elliot. Right? I just said it, she'd say, hey, Elliot, I'd say, Mr. Elliot. And then so she caught on. It was Mr. Elliot. All that to say that you, you need to spell this out specifically, these requirements specifically to your wife. You need to get on the same page with your wife with regard to manners. Manners is the main thing, right? Ma manners are even boundaries. In fact, manners smooth boundaries. You, I would rather deal with a, a child that is, you know, or, or a person that's maybe a little bit, aggressive and a, a rambunctious and loud, but has good manners. I had some friends like that, I remember. I had some friends that were just crazy, they were wild. I mean, maybe I was one of them. But wherever we went, we had good manners and adults always recognize. Teach your, and I don't think this is a hard sell to another adult. I think your wife could be on, on board with this. Explain to your wife that, well, I require respect from children in my home. I require, I require it from my children. And so I would like, and you have a family meeting and explain to your friends, for now on, when your friends come over, these are the rules. They, there's no walking in without knocking on the door. I don't mind if your friends come. Like I said, you're, there's going to be some compromise. There will be some compromise, right? You're living with, you have as many kids as I have. So you got six people in your house, including yourself. Six people in your house. You, you, there's going to be some compromise. But you have to make it very clear what your expectations are in order to meet the criteria for that compromise. If your friends keep busting through the door and not saying hello and not use their manners, then I'm sorry, they can't come over here anymore. You're going to have to explain to your friend that he's not allowed to come over here uh, until he starts abiding by the, uh, the parameter, by being resp respect respectful, right? And so your friend, it'll become your friend, your, your children's task to teach your friends manners teach their friends manners. I had to do it. 
and uh, my children do it, and I think it's good for you to teach your children all this. But like I say, the children are an expression. What happens with the children are an expression of the bond between mom and dad. And mom and dad need to be on the same page. And obviously you and your wife think differently about this, and that's okay. You, you guys don't have to be on the same page for everything, but you need to be, you need to speak up in a, in a non angry way about what you, what you're requiring in order for this to continue to go on. If you're, if the friend, if the kids are going to be coming here, there are some things I expect. Like you said, I like that you said, I don't want you over here before seven, seven fifty. My dad had a rule like that too. I don't want anybody in my house after five thirty because that was dinner time. Or in my house after five thirty. I don't want anybody in my house before seven fifty. And you and your wife have to look at each other in the eye and agree on that. She, you can't. One of the worst things that happens in a family that subverts the authority and respect of both parents is that when one parent says something and the other parent contradicts it. When parents don't agree on things, children, a number of things happen, well, one of which is children know that they can take advantage of that rift between the parents. Uh, also, children, as a result, children have less confidence in themselves and in life because they have less confidence in their parents. They're, when when your parents are on the same page, when two parents are on the same page, the children, they may or may not like that page, but they know exactly where they stand. They're more stable children. They know where their boundary lies and they know mom and dad are on the same page. That's one of the things I love most about my wife. And not that we agree on everything, but my, for my children, they know that there is... There's no division between my, they're not going to pin my wife against me and me against my wife. We don't keep any secrets about what's happening with the children. If the children say something to mom, they know she, you're probably going to, she, she's going to go back and she's going to tell dad, right? Don't tell mom if you don't want dad to know because mom and dad are a team. She and I work together as a team. We have different strengths and weaknesses in terms of communicating and dealing with the children, but we, we operate as one and the same, right? Now there's, there are a few things that that skate under the radar that later on I have to address, right? Maybe there are things that we haven't addressed together, she and I. It's like when we, and then I forgive. I'm like, well, we've never we've never discussed this, Colleen. Um, and this happens this happens a lot. We've never discussed this. This is the first time it happened, so you know it's it's not a big deal. But in the future, let's make sure that this happens instead. Do you agree? Ask her, do you agree? Do you agree? Do you agree with me? And if she disagrees, well, then you're going to have to talk to her about it and figure out what, you know, what part of it do you disagree with and how can we compromise? But you need to get a yes, I agree from your wife every time. That way you can hold her accountable and the kids know that there's no, that there's no wishy-washy. There's no, oh, dad's not here, so mom's not going to do it, what, what dad requested. That can't happen. Your children will lose respect for everybody, including themselves, you, and for life itself, because there's no boundaries. And when there's no boundaries, there's chaos. And when there's chaos, anything goes. And when anything goes, there is confusion, and there's ungroundedness, and there's anxiety associated with it. You don't want your children to grow up in, a, in an environment like that. So get on the same page with your wife. Sit down and be very, be very uh, deliberate about what you expect, what you, what you will not tolerate. See where she is with regard to that and then have a family meeting with your children. You and her both agreeing and sharing with the children what you guys expect together. Um, she, you say, uh, she, let me read a little bit of, I'm not sure if this is wrong of me though and if there's a better less conflicted way of setting these boundaries and getting my wife to understand just think about being the ceo of a corporation right right you got to talk to your managers you're the ceo your wife is a manager that's this is this is the corporate way of seeing your family you are the ceo you're the president let me put it that way you're the president she's the vice president right what does the vice president do he manages the affairs of the president right the president sets the direction the vice president is his confidant and his his manager who goes and says, okay, guys, here's how we're going to do it. I got orders from above. This is what we want to go on. Now, it doesn't mean that he, that the president is a dictator and just says what he does, what he wants and doesn't have a discussion with his cabinet or, or with his vice president. No, 
they work it out together. They get they become uh, in agreement in one accord with one another. And then the executor is the manager. Your wife, when you're not there, she's the executor of your will. That's essentially what it is. And she, you need to understand that. And she needs to understand that. That even though you're not there, it's her responsibility to execute your will. Otherwise, it just ain't going to work. It just ain't going to work. She's going to have her own agenda. She's going to have her own ideas. She's going to turn the children against you. I will tell you that for sure. Because now you're the bad guy. Right? If you, even if your wife doesn't agree with what you're doing, but you have agreed to fulfill it, meaning you know, I don't, it's not maybe the way she would do things, but you come to an agreement on how things should be done, and she doesn't fulfill, and she doesn't follow through, then you, what ends up happening is the children favor mom. They go to mom. They want to talk to mom, and they disfavor dad, and they disrespect dad because not even mom will listen to dad right? Super, super, super important for family to work, man. And this is, this is a lot of stuff that has been lost. We're talking respect from children. We're talking setting boundaries as a father. We're talking about a unified vision and execution of a life plan with your wife and husband. These are so important. And I think the part of the reason why families just don't work is because these, these conversations aren't had. And so you need to have this conversation with your wife. And you need to go with your wife to your children and set the, set, the, set the table straight and make sure that your wishes are being followed. And so I hope that helps, dude. Done. Yo, it's your bro, Elliot. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip from one of my most recent King Transformation classes with my students where, among other things, we get together about four or five hours a week and we speak on things as it relates to becoming kings in our lives and fitness, business, and with women. That sounds like you and you want to join a like-minded group of men who are growing stronger every day in every way in this degenerate age, then it's real simple. Just follow me on Instagram and then DM me the word King, K-I-N-G, and then me and my team will get back to the details to see if you qualify. I really hope to see you at the next meeting. Done.